Okay, we're going to look at Jesus Christ in the Old Testament today. And this is a response to Scott and Anna of Pure Word Ministries, who've requested that I bring forward some scripture to clarify my position according to the word so that it can be abundantly clear to yourselves pure word ministry and to anybody else not just my opinion but what the scripture says regarding Jesus Christ in the Old Testament salvation in the Old Testament the relationship between the Old Testament saints and Jesus Christ and I've got some audio to play which will make it easier to respond to some of your questions and you have to excuse my voice <laughs> it's not good <laughs> my voice I'm still not well okay I've been ill for a couple of weeks but um, I just want to get grounded in the New Testament first in Colossians uh, chapter 1 here so that we've got some groundwork laid down for what scripture says so from verse 12 through to verse 16 giving thanks unto the father which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Amen. So clearly the scripture is telling us about Jesus Christ, redemption through his blood, that by him were all things created, all things were created by him and for him. And this is the one passage that's really helped me to see Jesus Christ in the Old Testament um, and I'm sure many others will testify the same thing that by understanding this short passage here we can have a much greater understanding of God and of the Creator and of Jesus Christ right through the whole of scripture because we literally belong to Jesus you'll see I've got Deuteronomy chapter 14 open here I just want to go through the first couple of verses here ye are the children of the Lord your God ye shall not cut yourselves nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God and the Lord have chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth clearly scriptures talking about Israel the children of Israel here and what would seem quite incredible here is that the Lord thy God has to be Jesus Christ not the Father for thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself now remember by Jesus Christ were all things made, all things were made by him and for him. So let's go and listen to 
Let's go and listen to some of the audio from your most recent uh, live stream because I believe there's confusion going on and I don't want to partake in that confusion. I want to clarify and as you'll hear late, later in this audio, you do ask me to uh, clarify, uh, to bring forward what I believe about salvation, Jesus Christ, the Old Testament, the New Testament, etc. Okay, so let's just take it from here. Scripture on broken has just entered into ch into the chat here, asking if you know was Solomon uh, eternally secure in his salvation? Yeah, that that's the ten. Do you ten, know ten Yahweh? Yeah, I know. Do you know? Can you say beyond a shadow of doubt that he was? I can't. Yeah, that that guy. I know this much. Uh, Solomon's not mentioned in the whole that, That's the guy faith. that said we were Gnostic. Yeah, I, 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 I trust me. I know exactly yeah. who he is. Yeah. So you know, it's it's. And, and again, I think that all comes down to a pride issue. Like you're you're very prideful, and you, and you can't yeah. take uh, correction, and you can't take uh, edification and and growing in knowledge of Christ. You just want to, you know, be a jerk, and that's on you. We are, so. <laughs> we are being able ministers of the new covenant. The new covenant preaches the new birth. Right. So if you want to decide you're not going to preach the new birth or try to say that the new birth And again, this, this isn't about existed, like Samuel. I mean, you know. I'm sorry. Excuse me. This isn't about Solomon. Like God in the Old Testament did what he did with the Holy Spirit on whom he used the Holy Spirit for. Like yeah. so I, I believe Solomon was saved. Uh, you know, he was not in the, what is it, the Hall of uh, Faith. There there was a Hall of Faith right and he was not in there, but I believe he was saved. I'm not saying and, Solomon uh, was, was not saved. We're not saved. talking about Solomon here, oh, okay. you know, we're not talking about that. But I like know Solomon God wasn't saved the way used we used his spirit, he, exactly, <laughs> his right. spirit. You just said that Solomon wasn't saved like we are. Well, I beg to differ. Salvation comes through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone, for everybody, from Adam and Eve right through to ourselves today and beyond. To say that Solomon wasn't saved like we are uh, is, is preaching a different gospel. You're saying there's two different gospels. So, um, sorry about my voice. Um, and, and you're also saying that you don't know if Solomon was uh, eternally or secure, eternally secure in his salvation. Well, you, you're you're making two different gospels. You think this is my understanding of what you're saying. You think that. The Old Testament gospel is different from the New Testament gospel. Well, I'm going to show you today in a lot of scripture that that's not the case, that um, the Old Testament saints knew Jesus Christ. They were saved by faith in Jesus Christ. And I'll make that abundantly clear because I think this is really the contention it's certainly the reason why um, why I'm challenging you on these things because well let's just listen to mo some more of your audio so that we get a, a clearer understanding for the purposes that he he chose it to be used for exactly and, so. and I'm just I'm tired of people judging God and being like oh well you know it, yeah. it's like I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe we need to take take this the, the, this opportunity to be like, you know what? There are just certain things I don't know. I don't know. I don't. And there's nothing wrong with saying I don't know. Right. Okay. But to try to say, oh, well, because Solomon was saved, because he was a serial fornicator, then I could be a serial fornicator and be saved. There's something wrong with your heart. Period. 
Right. Okay. And to try to use the fact that, well, if this guy was saved, then that means I'll be saved. Right. Nobody's saying that, Scott. I've never ever said I want to be or I'd be happy to be a serial fornicator. And I've never said that because Solomon was saved, I am saved. I'm saved by my faith in Jesus Christ alone, by the grace of God. That's how I'm saved. Solomon was saved by his faith alone in Jesus Christ alone, by the grace of God. It's the same gospel, but nobody's saying they want to be serial fornicators, serial this, serial that, or whatever. All I did was ask a simple question in your chat. Do you believe that Solomon was secure in his salvation, which you really don't seem to believe he was? Let's listen on. And, and if right. I do these things, there's also and, a purpose to like, all of all of what happened to Solomon. The Song of Solomon was a beautiful picture of a marriage to one woman, and then he he sinned by being married and joined to a bunch of other women from different religions, which led him into apostasy. Uh, and yet, at the end of the day, he came back and wrote Ephesians, which is not Ephesians, uh, Ecclesiastes. Excuse me, which is a picture of his repentance in Christ for the mistakes that I made. So all of Ecclesiastes See. is a book of repentance of Solomon towards Jesus Christ, or excuse me, towards God. That's right. That's right. Um, Tenefe, uh, scripture unbroken. That was one of the last things Solomon actually wrote, isn't it? It is. But listen, Solomon wasn't saved by his repentance. Solomon was saved by faith. Solomon was saved by faith. He may well have repented of his idolatry or whatever. He may well have repented of um, idolatry and fornication and the life he led towards it, the end of his life. But he, he didn't repent of those things to regain salvation. See, you're confounding two completely different issues here. The question I ask is, do you believe that Solomon was secure in his salvation? And first of all, you say, well, we don't know. <laughs> well, if you, if you believe the gospel, you'll know that Solomon was secure, eternally secure in his salvation. But first of all, you say, well, we don't know about the Old Testament saints if they had eternal security. And then you go on to say, oh, I, well, we believe he was saved. He repented of his fornication, his idolatry, and whatever other things he was doing toward the end of his life. See, that's the difference. That's, that's the contention right there. Is that, did he repent? Well, maybe he did. But that wasn't for him to regain salvation. And this comes down to you believing that unless, you know, this is my understanding. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but this is what I've been understanding from what you've been speaking about for the last several months, is that you you believe that un 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 unless we're sealed with the Holy Spirit, then we can lose salvation. Or, let's put it another way, that the Old Testament saints could didn't have eternal security because they weren't sealed like the New Testament saints are now since the Pentecost. And nobody's arguing with you about the Pentecost. Nobody's saying that people were sealed with the Holy Spirit before the Pentecost. That's not the argument. The argument is what you're saying about the Old Testament saints and their relationship with God. And I'm saying, and I'll show you in the scripture, that the Old Testament saints had a relationship with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And it's really... 
becomes abundantly clear when we open the scriptures up to gain some understanding of the Old Testament and salvation in the Old Testament. This is the whole duty of man. Fear God and keep his commands. That's right. He repented. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, you know, we're you we're know, not like... up to you know, uh, you know, we're we're not the ones who are appointed to judge the no, the, the salvation I... of the Old Testament saints. I, for one, believe Solomon is saved. Yeah. Look, I believe Solomon, Solomon was saved a, also. A bunch of mistakes, <laughs> but he also wrote a bunch of books of the Bible in order to benefit us yeah. as the church of christ so we can look back and be like i don't want to make that mistake i don't want to make that mistake no. this wise man made that mistake we're here to learn from him you know yeah. if that makes any sense yeah it's a we, we we keep like getting like you know all this stuff trying to like we look at these uh that the old testament saints be like oh well they were well they were sinners and you know, we're all they did this, and he was a serial he was a serial fornicator and i mean i mean you know it's like they also were not children of god that's right whoa they also were not children of god i i really don't know what you mean by that all saved people all the saints from adam Right through until every person on this earth, on this planet earth, who is saved is a child of God. Which is why I've got this scripture up here. Deuteronomy 14. Ye are the children of the Lord your God. And Paul expands on this. In the New Testament. So look, let's go to Romans chapter 9. Okay, Paul in Romans chapter 9 talks about the children of God. From verse 6 Not as though the word of God have taken on effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac thy seed shall be called. In Isaac thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. The children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. Okay. So the children of God are not necessarily physical Israel, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. If we go to Galatians chapter 3, we get an even more abundantly clear teaching from Paul on this. Okay, Galatians 3 from verse 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you has been, have been baptized unto Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then ye are, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. If ye be Christ's, then ye, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. 
Let's go back to Deuteronomy 14. Ye are the children of the Lord your God. Okay. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. This here in scripture is Jesus Christ. If ye be Christ, then ye, are Ab ye be Abraham's seed. Sorry about my voice in my reading today. If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. When Paul is speaking to the church at Galatia here, he's saying exactly the same thing that Moses is saying to the children of God here. It's exactly the same thing. So why you would say that Solomon and the children of Israel and the Old Testament saints are not children of God is absolutely beyond me. I don't understand. You seem to think there's a difference between God's children in the Old Testament and the New Testament. There's no difference. It's all by faith alone in Christ Jesus alone. They didn't know the name Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. But you see this L-O-R-D in capitals in the Old Testament. That's Jesus Christ. That's Jesus Christ. And I'll show you this in much more detail in this video. Not to be a jerk. Not to be self-righteous. Not because my understanding is better than anybody else's. But because the Lord has revealed it in his scripture. Now, let's continue a little bit more. Don't you understand? What did it say? I can't remember exactly what the verse is, but where I believe it was Jesus speaking, talking about, look, in the Old Testament, you know, if somebody did something wrong with two or three witnesses, they would put to death. How much more, how much more people that, you know, do you understand? And it's like we have so much more of light has been given to us That's through right. the Lord Jesus Christ. You're wrong. You're wrong. Jesus gave life and light to all. And it's right through the Old Testament scripture. And Jesus was with his people. I'm going to show you that abundantly clearly. That Jesus being spoken about in the Old Testament scripture is not just prophecy. He's there with his people. Jesus walked with his people for 4,000 years before he was manifest in the flesh. I'm going to show you this clearly today. If you've got the ears to hear, the eyes to see, because it's all in the scripture, really abundantly clear that the Old Testament saints knew Christ, had Christ with them, communed with Christ, walked with Christ. They knew Christ. I'm going to show you it so clearly that it's just going to if you've not heard this before, I don't know who you listen to, who your teachers are, who you, your, the pastors you listen to, etc. I do not know anything about your walk. But if you haven't heard this before, then it may be, it might just blow your mind. These scriptures absolutely blow my mind. And I'm going to open these scriptures up for you today if you want to listen. In the New Testament, we are held at a higher accountability. Okay? We are. We are. And to try to make this parallel between Solomon or this one in the Old Testament and that one in the Old Testament, like, well, obviously they were born again, but you're just interjecting that. You're assuming that. You have no biblical support for that. There's biblical support for it, Scott. 
there's biblical support for everything. I'm saying I'm not interjecting anything. But you're making that the case because what you're really saying is he was born again and he was a serial fornicator and he's fine. Okay? That's the real crux of it. That's the real thing that we're getting to here, which I, you know, I dare to say, and, 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 and forgive me if I am wrong, but that is uh, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness teaching, right. whereas you are now and, giving a free form. You know, just really quickly before okay. we go, I want to wrap it up here, but he says, nor do you see Jesus Christ right through the Old Testament. <laughs> we see Jesus Christ all throughout the yeah. Old Testament. He's been prophesied about again and again even from Genesis, and they're trying to yeah. take it back to the the Nephilim, yeah, Israel, the that. sons of God. I'm sorry, you don't you don't see Jesus through the Jesus isn't in the Old Testament just as prophecy. He's prophesied to manifest in the flesh to become a man, a Messiah, a Savior that's going to go to the cross and be a living sacrifice. For sin, for sinners. But if that's all you see of Jesus in the Old Testament, then you're not seeing Jesus throughout the Old Testament. Genesis 6. So I want to ask you if it's impossible for angels and humans to procreate and make Nephilim. What is Jesus? He's not Nephilim. <laughs> He's, <laughs> I've not mentioned Nephilim. I didn't mention Nephilim in your, in your comments. I, Nephilim's not even a word that I use. The, word, the biblical word in the KJV is giants. I didn't mention giants. I didn't mention Nephilim. I didn't mention angels. I didn't mention fallen angels. I didn't say that. I made a simple statement of fact when you said that the old testament saints are not the children of god i made a statement of fact i said uh that you don't think or that you don't believe that the sons of god in genesis 6 are believers that's that's all i said and that's a statement of fact you do not think the sons of god in genesis 6 are believers I know that you don't think that, that you don't believe that. I was saying that because you were saying that there's no children of God in the Old Testament. So I made that point about the sons of God in Genesis 6 being believers. I've not mentioned anything about Nephilim giants, angels, fallen angels. I haven't said anything about that. I just mentioned sons of God in Genesis chapter 6. Your Putting all this on yourself, what you're saying now. What is Jesus? Okay. What is Jesus? Right? Half God, half man. No, 100% God. 100%. Yeah, okay. That's better. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, See, this is the thing. You think Jesus is some hybrid creature. It's incredible to me that you think Jesus is some part angel, part man, part God. That's not what Jesus is. Jesus is the eternal Son of God. The eternal Savior of the world but for those who come to him through faith. Uh, you know, so, I mean, there's things we just don't know. You know, yeah. and... In fact, I responded to when you asked who, what is Jesus? I did respond in your comments. I said, Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. It's that simple. You know, it's just, it, I feel sorry for you that you're so closed-minded that you can't see that, that there's a lot more going on here. Yeah, the devil is always trying to counterfeit God. Okay, he's always trying to counterfeit God. We don't know, and don't you dare try to think that you know how this works. How can an angel manifest itself and and have an offspring with the human look we don't
I don't even believe that, Scott. I don't believe angels had offspring with children. Scripture doesn't tell us that. You're getting that from another source, my friend. No, the science of any of this. That's right. Okay, like, but to God say that by believing that. that you somehow don't understand Scripture, I mean, right? Okay, yeah, I, mean, I mean, this what? guy's like, you know, like, you know, I've had dealings. With yeah, this yeah, dude. yeah. He's, we've dealt with this guy before. I've seen him. I know what he's said, and you, you know, know, look, man, we're just discussing this here. The fact of the matter is, here you are in this life chat, uh, live live stream on this subject where we are speaking the truth of the scriptures what jesus said i'm asking you scripture unbroken right now give an answer in the chat if you can i can't remember what verse it is but when it says that the uh, the holy spirit was not yet given because jesus was not yet glorified what does that mean to you go give an explanation yeah. explain to us how the spirit John We're 7, told explicitly, clear as day, the Spirit was not yet given. John because 7, he was, yes, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So explain to us now, oh man, okay, how the Spirit was given if the Bible says it wasn't given because Jesus was not yet glorified. That's right. And maybe. Perhaps you'll see, wait a minute, you know what? I'm actually saying something that is completely against what the Bible's saying. Okay? So until you could rectify yeah. that, I mean, don't again, speak to us to about like Scripture. A, uh, <laughs> a, like, well, the Old Testament saints will turn like yeah, here. It's like, we it's like, don't know that. Yeah. We do know that. We know that the, the, the Old Testament saints were eternally secure in their salvation. It's abundantly clear that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you're not saved. Nobody was saved by any other gospel. But discounting that people were saved, but we're just saying they weren't eternally secure. Yeah, apart from I Jesus mean, Christ, there's no eternal security you know, apart from Jesus Christ. Yeah. See, this is the problem. This is This is the crux of it. This is the crux of it. You're saying... There was no eternal security for Old Testament saints because it only comes through Jesus Christ. You do not believe the Old Testament saints had Jesus Christ, had the gospel of Jesus Christ, had the Holy Spirit, had eternal security. I don't understand what you think the Old Testament is about, but I'll show you today what it's about. Okay. Um, so yeah, okay. So let's answer that anyway. So let's go to John chapter seven. Okay, John chapter seven. So from verse thirty-seven, in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, "If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water." So first of all. You know, you're quoting verse 39, but look at this verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, I think that goes back to Isaiah. Um, let me just pull that up a moment. Okay, so that John, th uh, John 7 verse 38 there's a whole load of Old Testament scriptures surrounding that. I'm just pulling up one here. Isaiah 58 verse 11. And the Lord, look at that, Lord, L-O-R-D, all in capitals, okay? I'm going to prove to you that Jesus is actually, I'm going to prove to you today, Jesus is all through the scriptures. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought. And make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. So, the Lord, L-O-R-D, capitalized, there is Jesus Christ. He that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. 
Okay, but this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So you're asking me, what does this scripture mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means what you say it means. But you're not understanding that the Old Testament saints had the Holy Spirit. And I'll prove it to you now. The Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Now look, let's go to John chapter 14. So John 14 verse 17 says, Even the Spirit of Truth, capital S Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye, Jesus talking to the disciples, ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. He dwelleth with you. They have the Holy Spirit. The disciples have the Holy Spirit, just like the Old Testament saints had the Holy Spirit. He shall be in you is talking about as you rightly point out, the, after the Pentecost, at the time of Pentecost, when God pours the Spirit out on his people and they're sealed with the Spirit, that's the sealing of the Holy Spirit in the saints after Pentecost. But before Pentecost, the people had the Spirit, the Spirit dwelleth with the saints here at the time of Christ and in the Old Testament. Because Christ was on the earth, Christ was in the earth from the very beginning. Only when he manifested in the flesh did things change. That was when Christ started. Christ appeared as a man, as a Messiah, as a Messiah that was going to go and be a living sacrifice on the cross. Then after the death, burial, resurrection, after the ascension into heaven, then the Spirit is sent. I think you believe the world was without Christ in the Old Testament, and and that's not that's not a true testimony of of Jesus Christ. It's not a true understanding of the Old Testament. So when Jesus uh, resurrects, the Old Testament saints rise out of the ground with him. And then he uh, he spends 40 days with his disciples. I think it's 40 days, 30 or 40. I'm pretty sure it's 40 with his disciples. Then he ascends into heaven. And then after the Pentecost or at the Pentecost, God pours out his spirit on believers and they are sealed with the Holy Spirit. So nobody's arguing your point again about the Pentecost. I've not heard one person come against what you're teaching on the Pentecost, but what we're coming against you about is your teaching on the Old Testament. Okay, because Jesus clearly says here, the world cannot know the, the Holy Spirit, the world, because it is an unbelieving world, but ye, believers, this is the disciples, ye know him, for he dwelleth with you. He dwelleth with you and shall be in and shall be in you, shall be in you after the Pentecost. Anyway, let's just go back, listen to this a little bit more. But there you go, John 7 39. Refute that verse. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. whoa, 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 whoa. Refute a verse of scripture. Are you seriously tempting a Christian to refute scripture? That's that's not right. That is not right what you're saying there. We do not command people or tempt people into refuting scripture. That is not of God. Your words are not of God. May the Lord Jesus rebuke you for even saying that. That is a devilish thing to say. 
refute scripture. We don't refute scripture, we prove the scripture. We prove the scripture and we can only prove the scripture when God reveals the scripture to us. And then we can preach the scripture. Which is what I'm doing you here now, showing you in John 14, that the disciples knew the Holy Spirit and he dwelt with them. It's plain, simple scripture there. We're not, we're not commanded to refute scripture, any scripture. Okay. And unless you have a direct answer, okay, because that's as direct as it gets. That's as clear as day as it gets. If you can't read that and be like, wow, that says what it means, it means what it says. It does. Then don't even bother trying to tell us anything about any other part of scripture. Because right. if you're not able to understand what is right there before your eyes, okay, it is only because there is something wrong with you. There's something amiss. There's something you have ulterior motive here. And I don't know what that is. Right. All right. Okay, the, the ulterior motive is to show you Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. That's the ulterior motive, is to, is to show you what Scripture says, not what you think it says. To show you that the Gospel, which is what I'll be doing today, showing you that the Gospel of Jesus Christ is the same for all believers, past, present, future. The Old Testament saints knew Jesus Christ. And in fact, this video is going, getting a bit long already, but um, so I'll probably make it in two parts. But I cannot in good conscience listen to you when you can't even come to grips with a clear, clear passage. There is nothing that there's, that there is no other, uh, you know, that verse right there is one of those verses in the Bible that are, that is just so direct, so spot on. There that there isn't like oh well you know uh, you know let, let's check the, the look. Nobody's saying it's not direct and it's not clear. Nobody's saying they don't have the understanding of it, Scott. You're just not understanding where myself and other people are coming from when we say the Old Testament saints knew God, they knew Jesus Christ, the Son. Well, what's the context here? The context is, right. the context is what it says. He spoke of the Spirit, which they, uh, which they that believe on him should receive, meaning they haven't received them yet. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. That's why they haven't received them, because that Jesus was not yet glorified, meaning Jesus Christ had to die on the cross Okay, be resurrected and, and glorified in order for the promise of the Holy Spirit to come and indwell the believer and take residence in his temple. Nobody's denying that, Scott. That's not the point. The reason you're suffering opposition, if you like, and I'm trying to put this as sympathetically on uh, from your point of view as I can, the reason you're suffering opposition is because you you don't believe that the Old Testament saints knew Jesus Christ. Not just in prophecy, personally knew God. That's the whole point. That's okay, right. That's right. that is the context, that is the meaning, period. Right, right. And, and, and really, in all honesty, the Old Testament doesn't give us enough information to know, you know, how Old Testament saints were saved. We believe they were saved. It does. It gives us all the information we need. This is, um, this is problematic, what you're saying. You're saying that God has not given us the information we need to preach the Word of God. That's... Just mind, mind-numbingly insane to say that that there's not enough information in Scripture to know about our brothers and sisters in Christ of the Old Testament. That's who they are. They are brothers and sisters in Christ. 
and to saying that we cannot know our brothers and sisters in Christ is is I don't understand why why you'd even think that why you'd think that God would not give us sufficiency why God would not give us anything we need God God promises anything you need he will provide it for you if you genuinely need something whether it's wisdom instruction faith anything you need God provides for you you're his children we are his children and this idea that there's not enough information in scripture it, it means you're not the scripture's not lacking the scripture's not lacking our understanding of scripture is what's lacking our understanding of scripture is what's lacking the scripture has never been lacking never the scripture is not lacking. God is not dealing us all short in any way whatsoever. But God says, if any man lack in wisdom, ask, ask. And it's all revealed in scripture. You know, we believe that they went to the uh, Abraham's bosom. We believe that Jesus came to them after his crucifixion and did something with them. You know, but they were, it's different. The church age is different than, you know, the Old Testament saints. The church age is different, but the gospel isn't. The church age is different. It's a different age. It's a different time. It's a different dispensation from what went before. It is different, but the gospel isn't different. God isn't different. Jesus Christ isn't different. The Holy Spirit isn't different. Salvation isn't different. Eternal security isn't different. Security isn't different. We're in a different age. We're in a different time. But the gospel never changes. The gospel never changes. You know, and that's what we need to realize is that the guarantee of eternal salvation came by Jesus Christ. Being yes, it did. From Adam right through. The dwelling of the Holy Spirit came by Jesus Christ. Yes. And the sealing of the Holy Spirit came after Pentecost. We get it. We're not stupid people. You seem to think that we're somehow stupid people that don't understand the very spirit that dwells in us. Well, we don't understand everything about the, the spirit that dwells in us, but if we need to know everything about the spirit that dwells in us, it's in Scripture. We can find it. We can find the answers. We ask God to reveal it to us. Ace, you know. Yeah. It's very clear in Scripture in the New Testament. It's very clear that those exactly. things came by Jesus Christ. So that means exactly. we need to ask ourselves apart from Jesus Christ, were these things possible? And there's no evidence to suggest that they were. I 100% agree, which is why you need to know that the Old Testament saints were saved by faith in Jesus Christ. They knew Jesus Christ, not just prophecies of Jesus Christ they actually knew Jesus Christ that's it I mean look man if you don't understand that all we're doing is looking to the scripture all right and believing the scripture at for what it says yeah I mean that is it all right that is it if you want to get on us because we believe in in, in the Nephilim okay that's fine bro all right that's fine. A lot of the other people you roll with believe the same thing. Go and talk to them about it. Okay? You don't need to believe that. You don't, you know, that's fine. Okay? I've never mentioned the Nephilim or giants or angels or uh, what you call them, fallen angels. I never mentioned that in your live stream. Ever. That wasn't the... the that wasn't the, uh, the conversation. The conversation was... Children, the children of God. You're saying that they weren't children of God in the Old Testament. Hey, that's not a salvation yeah, thing I mean, or anything. You know, no, that's fine. Scripture broke. We say the Old Testament gives us plenty of information. Well, we we would love to hear it. Yeah, and it like, gives us plenty of information. Enlighten us, like.
Okay, so now you see, you are asking me to enlighten you. So I'm going to have to cut this video into two parts. Um, I'm going to I'm going to show you some scripture that will absolutely astound you as it astounds me every time I read it. I will show you quite clearly Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, not in prophecy, in the Old Testament with his people. I'll show you that abundantly clearly and um, that'll be coming in part two. But it is, you know, it's not to war with you. It's not to fight with you. It's not to name call you. It's to go through the scripture together that we can understand it together and get greater clarification from each other. Um, and I hope that's what you'll take from this and what you'll take from what I will show you concerning people like Moses and Elijah and Jesus Christ in this in the next video in part two of this. Amen.